I thank you for this moment, and may your words speak to our hearts, and may we be changed and transformed by them. In the name of Jesus, amen. For the last several weeks and over the next several, we are on this journey of figuring out whether we're fans or followers of Jesus. The first week, we asked that very question, and we decided that in order to live out our core values, which you will see on our screen, that we must make the decision to be followers if we're going to do those things. The next week, we talked about Matthew, the tax collector, the unimaginable being called to do God's work, and that we would have to follow Jesus, and in order to do so, we must... Forget what lies behind, open ourselves up to what Jesus offers us, to let God lead, to allow Jesus to be Lord, to obey Him, and to go willingly wherever, whenever, to do whatever He asks us to do. By doing those things, we could follow Him. And then two weeks ago, we hung our hats on the question that the rich young ruler asked Jesus about what must I do to gain this life you keep talking about. And Jesus said, sell your possessions, meaning give Get rid of anything that holds you down and has you. Secondly, to give your money to the poor and give up what you think you need in order to receive all the things that Jesus has for us. And then we can follow him and blessings will pour down on us. Last week, we examined the story of three saints who offered excuses for not following Jesus right away. The first man declared confidently that he would follow Jesus wherever until Jesus explained that he had no place in which to lay his head and that the places they would go wouldn't be cushioned comfortable and we never heard from that dude again. <laughs> the second gentleman wanted to first bury his father, meaning that he wanted to make sure things were all taken care of first and you know, kind of live his life a little bit longer before he would do whatever it took. To follow, And then Jesus saw through the last person's excuse and got to the heart of the matter. He wanted to get things right first whenever things were more convenient, and they are never more convenient. We've each made those excuses in our past, and we decided that in order to follow Jesus, we must put away any and all excuses behind us and get ready to follow him. So in our scripture lesson for this morning, Jesus warns his followers about the religious leaders of that day. I would imagine having the language that we're now using today that Jesus would have called these people fans and not followers because they got caught up in their traditions and their laws and in their own importance that they lacked what Jesus said it would truly take to follow him. For our consideration today, I would suggest that these religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees of that day, they didn't practice what they preached as the scripture told us. They couldn't walk their talk if you will, and as a result, these fans focused on tradition, not transformation, laws, not love, and being served, not serving. So let's begin with that tradition, not transformation. Dictionary.com says that tradition is the handing down of beliefs, customs, or information from one generation to another. They're long established or inherited ways of thinking. We each have our own traditions, don't we? That being said, the Pharisees' traditions and their interpretations and applications of the laws had become as important, if not more important, than God's laws themselves. These traditions had, established, had been established to set them apart from the other nations during their years of wilderness wanderings and being outsiders in foreign lands. But following these traditions allowed the Pharisees to feel good about themselves for honoring those traditions. And I got to thinking about it. I mentioned this in Bible study a, a couple weeks ago when we talked about this lesson. You know, I often felt good about, you know, honoring <clears throat> my Baptist traditions. You know, not smoking, drinking, gambling, or dancing. Though <laughs> <laughs> so that clearly leaves me maybe a little bit more healthy than some of you, the not drinking and the not smoking part. It leaves me broke because I'm not going to play nobody's lottery. I ain't got no scratch-off tickets or nothing like that. No Powerball is in my future. And it also leaves me uncoordinated, not to mention uncool. So much for honoring those traditions, right? They've not served any great purpose in my life. They were formed to keep any of us who followed them focused on God, but more often they helped us focus on ourselves and how <coughs> good we've been, right? Keeping those traditions were important to the people of the first century. No one seemed to be excluded from being a traditionalist. Remember the time in John's Gospel in the fourth chapter when Jesus 
when he said Jesus had to go through Samaria. Remember the disciples went off on their own and they kind of did their own thing for a little bit and Jesus goes into Sychar and sits down at the well, Jacob's well in fact, and there he meets this woman. This woman who comes to draw water in the heat of the day around noontime. And John tells us that as, G as the woman goes to draw the water, that Jesus, breaking tradition, asks this woman for a drink. The foreign woman was the one to speak up, reminding Jesus that he wasn't honoring his own people's traditions. She said curtly to him, How is it that you, a Jew, are asking of me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink of water? Tradition held that men and women did not speak in public. And tradition also said that Jews and Samaritans went together like water and electricity. They didn't. You weren't to mix the two. Yet Jesus didn't allow tradition to keep him from transforming this woman's life, did it? Absolutely not. Jesus continued talking to her even at the dismay of the disciples as they come back and ask, why are you talking to her? And as a result of the conversation that Jesus continued having breaking tradition with this woman, her life was forever changed. In fact, John 4.39 says, Many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus because of that woman's testimony. Amen. Had Jesus followed tradition like the Pharisees would have wanted him to, the woman would have never found the healing and the help she found that day. Tradition triumphs transformation only for fans of Jesus, but not followers. I always want to choose to be transformed, regardless of tradition. Similarly, the Pharisees also held so tightly to the laws that had been created to also set the Israelites apart and to keep them loving God and loving each other. Didn't Jesus tell us that the law, those Ten Commandments, could be boiled down to two, loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself, right? Keeping the laws became paramount to living by the standards of love that were behind those laws to the Pharisees. This is confirmed in Luke chapter 13 when Jesus, while teaching on the Sabbath day in the synagogue, was approached by a woman who the Scripture tells us had a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. The, uh, Luke says that um, this woman was bent over and unable to stand up for 18 years. Can you imagine Luke tells us when Jesus saw the woman that he called her over. And he said to her, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. You are free from your ailment. And then Luke says he laid his hands on her and immediately she stood up and began praising God. Won't God do it, saints? But wouldn't you know, the leader of the synagogue, the scripture says, indignant that Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days, he suggested, and be cured, but not on the Sabbath day. For real? <laughs> First of all, won't nobody else going to be up in there on any day but the Sabbath, right? So how is she going to get her healing? Jesus wasn't going to be up in there. Because the... <laughs> oh, gets my blood pressure up. But because, <laughs> but because the law said to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, Jesus is supposed to let this woman who has been suffering like this for 18 years to come back at a more opportune time. You know, a time that the law allowed unbelievable but you know this hit me at four o'clock this morning I can't think of anything more holy than a healing Amen. how about you fans are motivated by keeping rules when Jesus is motivated behind the love holding up those rules and therefore he helped the woman as soon as he saw her regardless of the day it was and of the laws that the Pharisees thought should keep him from helping this woman laws trump love for fans of Jesus but not followers. Let's not get so caught up in rules that we miss the meaning behind them. It's more important to follow. Is it more important to follow the rule or help the hurting? Let's be accused of loving too much. How about that? That's what followers do. Lastly, the scribes and Pharisees of the day, besides honoring traditions more than transformation and laws more than love, according to our scripture lesson, they also sought to be served rather than to serve. Matthew tells us they love to have the places of honor at banquets 
and to have the best seats in the synagogue. They want to be up front and be seen. This reminds me of the story of James and John's mother. Remember when she comes to Jesus and asks if her sons could have the right and left hand of Jesus when He comes into His glory. And Jesus reminded her that those seats weren't His to even give. And then not long after that, on the night that Jesus was to be handed over to suffering and death, He met in an upper room with His disciples. And during the meal, John tells us in chapter 13 of his gospel that Jesus got up from the table, likely from the place of honor, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around his waist, poured water in a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet. If you want to get raised up, stoop low, like the scripture said. This made them uncomfortable because, truth be told, most of us don't like exposing our feet. We don't get weekly pedicures like we'd like. We don't like people touching our feet. But more importantly, I would suggest that the disciples got more upset than that, and sometimes that does bother us a little bit. But I believe they got most upset because they realized that Jesus serving meant that they were to serve since disciples were to be like Him, right? That was their job. If Jesus washed feet, they'd have to wash feet. Serve rather than be served. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Being served trumps being a servant for a fan. But I want to serve, saints, whatever I can, however I can. In order for us to be followers and not merely fans, we must desire transformation over tradition, love over the law and serving rather than being served. And when we do these things, I believe we will be the followers we long to be and we will walk our talk. Followers give themselves away. So God can use us, give ourselves away. Here I stand. Here I am. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. Can we do that as a church? That means those things I'm used to might change. It means those laws or those rituals that we do might just not be here anymore. But if it's going to transform somebody else's life, that's what I want to happen around here. I want to be so loved by Jesus and loved so much that I'm going to love regardless of what the law says and when the law says to do it. I want to do what God asked me to do. And sometimes it's different than what I want to do. But I want to give myself away so God can use me. Fans, Hold back. Followers, give it all they've got. And I want to give it all I've got to Jesus Christ. I want to be a follower. Amen.